Why is it? Why did I do When the resolution of this, this issue basically borders on the interpretation of Section 134, Subsection 2B of the 1999 Constitution, the appropriate starting point for the resolution of this issue, therefore, is to reproduce for ease of reference Section 134.2A and B of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, the interpretation of which is in quotation. It reads thus. <clears throat> A candidate for an election to the office of president shall be deemed to have been duly elected where there, uh, there, being, there being more than two candidates for the election, A, he has the highest number of votes cast at the election, and B, he has not less than one quarter of the votes cast at the election in each of at least two-thirds of all states in the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. The contention is as to the interpretation uh, to be accorded to paragraph B of section, subsection 2 of section 134 quoted above. In particular, the contention is whether or not by the wordings in that paragraph, a candidate must, in addition to scoring not less than one quarter of the vote cast in at least two-thirds of the states in the Federation, also score one quarter of the vote cast in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, before he can be deemed to have been duly elected. In other words, whether in determining two-thirds of the states of the Federation in the, fed, uh, the federal capital is to be included and regarded as one of the states of the Federation, or his status is to be regarded as distinct from the other states of the Federation, such that scoring one quarter of votes in the FCC is a mandatory requirement for a candidate to be deemed duly elected as president. It is pertinent to say that unlike interpretation of statute, the interpretation of the Constitution has its own guiding principle. Uh, we'll look at the principles as stated in Federal Republic of Nigeria versus Nganjua, uh, reported in the uh, electronic law report, where the Supreme Court succinctly reviewed cited cases on interpretation of the Constitution and outlined these, uh, these principles, guiding principles as follows. A, in interpreting the Constitution, which is the supreme law of the land, mere technical rules of interpretation of status will be avoided so as not to defeat the principles of government ensuring therein. Hence, a broader interpretation should be preferred unless there is something in the text or in the rest of the Constitution to indicate that the narrower interpretation will be best carry out the objects and purpose of the Constitution. B, all sections of the Constitution are to be construed together and not in isolation. C, where the words are clear and unambiguous, a literal interpretation will be applied. Thus, according to the words, they are played and grammatical meaning. D, where there is ambiguity in any section, a holistic interpretation would be resorted to in order to arrive at the intention of its framework. E, since the draft person is not known to be extravagant with words or provision, every section should be construed in such a manner as not to render other sections redundant or superfluous. If, if the words are, um, are ambiguous, the lawmaker's intention must be sought first in the constitution itself, then in the other legislation and contemporary circumstances, and by resort to the mischief rule. B, the proper approach to the construction of the constitution should be one of liberalism, and it is improper to construe any of the provisions of the constitution as to defeat the obvious ends which the constitution was envisaged to achieve. See the case of Nafi Rabiu and the state, Bendel State was Attorney General Federation, Buhari Obasanjo, Savannah Bank, Ajilo, uh, Abia State was AG Federation. In finding, finding appropriate answer to this issue, are we to observe first that, with all due respect to counsel for the, to the petitioners, their interpretation of Section 134, Subsection 2B of the Constitution, founded principally on a fixation that the word and appearing between the phrases, it has not <clears throat> less than one quarter of the votes cast at the election in, in each of at least two thirds of all states of in the Federation and the federal capital territory is complete, completely fallacious. 
if not outrightly ludicrous. Even their recourse to the case of Abu Bakr and Yeradua does not help their argument because Toby JSC made it clear that a purposive rule of interpretation will not be, will, will not be appropriate where the intention of the lawmaker is clear, precise, and unequivocal. So much so that any a person can say yes, this is what the lawmaker has in mind. Thus, in the interpretation of the constitution, the principles upon which the constitution was established, rather than the direct operation or literal meaning of the words used, measure the purpose and scope of its provision. The Global Excellence Communication Limited, Donald Duke, um, AG Bender State, AG Federation, Saraki versus FRN, Sky Bank PLC, EU, Selim versus Gobank. That this is the position is not at all open to doubt. In Bronic Motors Limited versus Wemer Bank Limited, Namani JC or Blessed Memory, speaking from the Apple's court, confirm it when, after a painstaking analysis of the cases on the point, set at pages 30 to 30, 32, that court, a constitution is a living document, not just a statute, providing a framework for the governance of a country, not only for now, but for generations yet unborn. In construing it, and due regard must not be paid to merely technical rules. Otherwise, the objects of its provisions, as well as the intention of the framers of the constitution, will be frustrated. As stated in, in Minister of Home Affairs versus Fisher, a constitutional requirement should not necessarily be construed in a manner according to rules which apply to acts of parliament. Although the manner of interpretation of constitutional instrument should give effect to the language used, recognition should also be given to the character and origins of the instrument. Such an instrument should be treated as sui generis, calling for principle of interpretation of its own, suitable to its character, without necessary, accept, necessary, necessary acceptance of all the presumptions that are relevant to legislation or private law. It has also been accepted by all our courts that a broad and liberal interpretation should prevail in interpreting the provisions of our constitution, although one has constantly to bear in mind the object which such provisions were intended to serve. Sir Udo Udoma, JSC, very aptly stated this in Nafi Rabiu and the State, where the learned justice said, my lords, it is my view that the approach of this court to the construction of the constitution should be, and so it has been, one of liberalism, probably a variation of the theme of the maxim, uh, general maxim, ut tres magis valiat com tireat. I do not conceive it to be the duty of this court to construe any of the provisions of the constitution as to defeat the obvious ends the constitution was designed to, uh, to serve where another construction, equally in, con in accordance with the word and sense of such provisions, will serve to enforce and preserve, protect such a close of court. Some years down the line, in Global Excellence uh, Communication uh, Limited versus Donald Duke, one again JSC later CGN reiterated the relevant principle of the implementation of the constitution, which his lordship saying, among others, at page 19. As follows, the principles upon which the constitution was established, rather than the direct operation or literal meaning of the words used, use, major the scope and purpose of its provision. The words of the constitution are therefore not to be read with stultifying narrowness. Laws of court. All these were further followed by this court recently in Federal Republic of Nigeria versus Muhammadu Maigari Dingyadi in the following ways at the 33 of the report. One main guiding post is that the principles upon which the consumer was established rather than the direct operation or literal meaning of the words used measured the purpose and scope of its provisions. See global uh, excellence communication and other cases. There is always a need for the fulfillment of the object and true intent of the constitution. Therefore, the constitution must always be construed in such a way that it protects what it sets out to protect and guide what it's meant to guide. The Adelike or your state house of assembly. In interpreting the constitution of, of a nation, it is the duty of the court 
to ensure the words of the constitution preserve the intent of the constitution. Every constitution has a life and moving spirit within it, and it is this spirit that forms the, the reason d'etat of the constitution, without which the constitution will be a dead piece of document. The life and moving spirit of the constitution of this country is captured in the preamble. It has been held that when a constitutional provision is interpreted, the cardinal, the cardinal principle is to look, at, look to the preamble to the constitution as guiding star and the directive principles of state policy as the book of interpretation. And that while the preamble embodies the hopes and aspirations of the people, the direct principles set out the proximate grounds in the governance of the country. This is the Kuru and Union of India. In other words, in interpreting the words of Section 212.1a of the 1999 Constitution as amended, the court should be guided by principles upon which the Constitution was established, rather than by direct operation or literal meaning of the word used in the provision. And while the literal meaning of the words used are not in consonance with the guiding principle, literal interpretation must be jettisoned to another, to another approach that accords with the guiding principles of the Constitution. The interpretation that would serve the interests of the Constitution and best carry out its objects and purpose must always be preferred. Close of call. Following these uh, well settled principles, our first port of call in unlocking the argument of the petitioners is the preamble to the 1999 Constitution and the direct principles of state policy contained therein, all of which embody the principles of the Constitution. The preamble to the 1999 Constitution loudly proclaims equality between citizens as its cornerstone, among others. Thus, we, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having firmly and solemnly resolved and to provide a constitution for the purpose of promoting the good government and welfare of all persons in our country on the principles of freedom, equality, and justice, and for the purpose of consolidating the unity of our people. Do hereby make and give to ourselves the following constitution. For those who are not used to reading preambles, the constitution, still in its fundamental objectives and directive principles of state policy, contained in Chapter 2 of the constitution, which this court aptly described as the road to construction in Federal Republic of Nigeria and Dingedi repeats this equality principle. Under its social objectives provision of chapter of, of that chapter in section 17 thereof, it again proclaims that one, the state social order is founded on ideals of freedom, equality, and justice. Two, in furtherance of the social order, every citizen shall have equality of rights, obligations, and opportunities before the law. Equality of rights in every citizen, as stated in this provision, cannot by any means be read to a to exclude equality of the weight and value of their votes. No, it includes it. Even more so, when the issue here is the right of every such citizen to elect with their votes their president, whose policies are supposed to and will affect all of them, equally regardless of which part of the country they reside or live. So even stopping here, the futility and hollowness in the argument of the petitioners that the votes of the voters in the FCT, Abuja, have more weight than others, other voters in the country, to the extent of their votes purportedly have a veto effect on other voters, other votes, is rendered bare. That, that, not, that notwithstanding, let us still proceed to consider for whatever it is worth their interpretation of Section 134, Subsection 2B of the same 1999 Constitution which incidentally centers around the word and in that provision. In the first place, the settled position of the law is that in interpreting a constitutional provision of the court, the court should be guided by the principles upon which the constitution was established, rather than by the direct operation or literal meaning of the words used in the provision. And while the literal meaning of the words used are not in consonance with the guiding principles, literal interpretation must be jettisoned for another approach that accords with the guiding principles of the constitution. It is quite clear that a calm reading of section 134 to B of the Constitution will leave no one in doubt that the use of the word and by the framework between the words, all states of the, 
all states in the federation and the federal federal, federal capital Sirius Abuja indicates that nothing more uh, indicates nothing more than that the framers, framers understandably understandable desire for consistency in referring to the federal capital territory by that name as it is done all through the constitution whenever reference is made to the federal capital territory the word and and federal capital territory Abuja do not by any means imply the meaning imputed to it by the petitioners. In any event, section 299 of the constitution dispels any lingering doubt that may still be existing in anyone's mind by stating that the provisions of this constitution shall apply to the federal capital territory Abuja as if it were one of the states of the federation, then ABC. This provision states most unequivocally that the entire provisions of the constitution shall apply to the federal capital territory as if it were one of the states of the federation. It is noteworthy that the punctuation mark employed by the framers immediately after the part of that provision ending with federation emphasized by me is a semicolon whose function is in a sentence is to separate independent clauses of a compound sentence. The Miriam Webster's online dictionary, which defines semicolon as a punctuation mark used chiefly in a coordinating function between major sentence elements, such as independent clauses of a compound sentence. Wikipedia also explains it uh, is used thus. In the English language, a semicolon is most commonly used to link two independent clauses that are closely related in thought, such as when restating the the seeding idea with a different expression. The point being made here is that, contrary to the position of the petitioners, by the express provisions of Section 299 above, the provisions of the entire constitution shall apply to the federal capital territory as if it were one of the states of the federation. This means that Section 134, Subsection 2B of the same constitution, requiring a president candidate to poll at least one quarter of the votes cast in two thirds of the of the federation in order to be returned elected means nothing more than that the federal capital territory shall be taken into account in calculating the state two-thirds of states of the federation in other words the fct is no more than one of the states of the federation for the purpose of that calculation nothing more than that is, can be implied or inferable from section 134 subsection 2b of the constitution if anything, this, this position is confirmed in the cases of Bakari and Ogun Dipe, where it was said by the Apex Court that by virtue of the provision of Section 299 of the Constitution, it is clear that the federal capital uh, of Nigeria has the same status of a state. It is as if it is one of the states of the Federation. And in Ibori versus Uboru, where it was confirmed by this court that the federal capital territory Abuja is to be treated like a state by virtue of section 299 of the constitution. If the federal capital territory Abuja is to be treated like any other state, then it is not superior to or inferior to any other state in Nigeria. It is, it is also my considered view that if the framers had wanted to make scoring one quarter of votes cast in the federal capital territory Abuja a specific requirement for the re return of a presidential candidate, they would have made that intention plain by using words that clearly separate the scoring of one quarter of votes in the federal capital territory as a distinct requirement. As expressly stated in section 299 of the constitution, for the purposes of fulfilling the requirements of section 134 subsection 2B of the constitution for return of, the, of a presidential candidate as duly elected, the federal capital territory Abuja is to be treated as one of these in the calculation of two thirds of the states of federation such that if the candidate polls 25% or one quarter of votes in two thirds of 37 states of the federation, FCT Abuja inclusive, the presidential candidate shall be deemed to have been duly elected even if he fails to score 25% of the votes cast in the federal capital territory Abuja as the second respondent did. In conclusion, I hold without any equivocation that in a presidential election polling one quarter of 20, or one quarter or 25% of total votes cast in the federal capital territory is not a separate precondition for a candidate to be deemed as duly elected under Section 134 of the Constitution.
In consequence, issue four is also resolved against the petitioners and in favor of the respondents. It is right law that there is a rebuttal presumption of regularity with respect to election results, and it is for a petitioner who challenges that result to rebut that presumption with credible evidence. This settled <coughs> principle was stated by the Supreme Court in Buhari and Ani. And, and Mirsum and Peter said others. Also in Udom Emmanuel, Udom Gabriel Emmanuel versus Umana, Ukon Umana, and others. All citations are right. <coughs>